balance to get right. But also maybe anger hardens your mind to where you don't notice the, the subtle, quiet beauty of the world. The quiet love that's always there that permeates everything. Sometimes right. you can become deeply cynical about the world if it's the Nietzsche thing. Yeah. Battle not with monsters, lest ye become a monster. Yeah. And if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. Right. But I would say, bring it on. <laughs> right? Because well, that's why well, I also say, knowing that he's absolutely right, but. If you gaze into the abyss long enough, you see the light, not the darkness. Uh, are you sure about that? I'm betting my life on it. Yeah, that's a heck of a bet. Well, that's... Because it might distort your mind to where all you see... Is abyss. Is, is, is abyss. Yeah. Is, is the evil in this world. Well, is then the, I would say is, you haven't looked long enough. You know, that's back to the... You're just the, the limited... The swords, enough. the flaming swords. It's like... So I said the whole story of Christ was prefigured in that image. It's like the story of Christ psychologically is radical acceptance of the worst possible tragedy. That's what it means. That's what the crucifix means. Psychologically, it's like gaze upon that which you are most afraid of. But that story doesn't end there. Because in, in, the, in the story, Christ goes through death into hell. So death isn't enough. The abyss, the abyss of innocent death is not sufficient to produce redemption. It has to be a voluntary journey to hell. And maybe that's true for everyone. And that's like, there is no more terrifying idea than that, by definition. And so then, well, do you gaze upon that? 